It's all made out of concrete, even though this looks like wood. I think it's mm -hmm. concrete that's been made to look like wood. Uh, and what what is it we learned about? There's three elements that are meant yeah. that were, inspired the structure mm -hmm. of the building, and it was wind, wind water, water, and, and uh, a bridge, bridge, which we're standing yeah. on now. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we're going to head inside now because mm -hmm. we've got someone who's very helpfully going to show us around a little bit mm -hmm. um, because we don't we don't know a lot about art. I think it's fair to yes. say. I don't know about uh, we, you. But. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and we need to find someone professional to show us more. Bit and more to give you, yeah, yeah to give, give you an insight. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. So let's go inside. Hi, hello. This is our guide, and he will probably tell you more about Musin and also the museum, right? Okay, hello, guys. Well, thank you. Uh, yes. you hear oh, okay. okay, welcome to Musin Art Museum. The museum opened in 2015 was designed by Hiroshi Okamoto and Binling, both work for OLI Architecture New York, and OLI's Fabian spent a year and a half to do the interior design and decoration. The museum was built for Mushin and is dedicated to his life and art. And for those of you who are not yet familiar with Mushin the person, uh, allow me to give a brief introduction of him. He was born here in Wuzhen, the year 1927, he was among the lost generation to receive a classical education in the literary tradition, but he was also exposed to the voluminous readings of the highest achievements in Western culture and art. Mm -hmm. Now, if we are ready, we shall move to the next room. Yeah. So I have a question. Actually, Mu Xin never had a chance to see the museum, yes. right? But he saw the plan. Plan, yes. yes. He knew the way it was going to work. Yeah, he, he knew mm -hmm. that. Good. Here, around, around the museum. How about come here? <laughs> <laughs> the microphone's a little. <laughs> around the museum, we have selected codes from his unpublished manuscripts and published them and printed them on the wall. We have also translated them into English, so uh, it's, we want to share the, uh, mm -hmm. his words for his Chinese audience and those who speak English. Yes, good. So he wrote in Chinese first and then translated yes. into yes. English. Yes. And this is the introduction gallery. It is not focused on any particular art, uh, any particular form of his art, but we want to provide information uh, to show different aspects of his life. So we have the relics of him, and there's also a photo of him, mm -hmm. along with his manuscripts. Mm -hmm. So these were all items that he used to own or wear. Yes. His life is also shaped hugely, influenced by personal and external turmoils. And it's all marked with traces. So here we can see his it's, uh, it's manuscripts um, on the back of a cigarette packet paper. <laughs> some items he have used. So these were all donated by the artist himself. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is very dark here, right? Let's go there. Can so you, Can you tell us a little about it? Uh, yes, that is uh, Rick, roughly colored his living room in his lost years. We have uh, designed it into a smaller size to fit the space of the room. Okay. And this, this was in in Wuzhen, yes, because yeah. he moved back to back Wuzhen. to Wuzhen in 2006. Yeah. So he lived lived in America for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mu Xing started to write poems in 12 years old, and when he was in his 20th, uh, he started to publish some poems and also other essays. So he's quite productive. Um, more knowledge than I have. So. Yeah. <laughs> please. Okay, go this way. I can see more of the poems. Mm -hmm. right, since most of his early works were lost, but we are able to collect uh, the paintings of his middle age and later life. And in this room, you can see we have the portraits, we have the loop sketch and the lithographs. At this stage, he has not yet formed his own unique uh, form of uh, mm -hmm. yeah, his, uh, 
unique art style. Yeah. So you can still see the influence of other artists like Lin Hongmi. Yeah. There's all kinds of artifacts and artists like mm -hmm. envelopes here from, I think, just, yeah, from exhibitions and things like that. It's amazing. It's, it's not just an art gallery. It's also a museum, isn't it? Yeah. These are the lithographs. So he really was, I, I've heard him described as a, um, as a polymath, because he wasn't mm -hmm. just an artist, he was also a writer. Writer, and a poet, painter. And made, yeah, he, had, he did everything, didn't yeah, he? He really did. Successful in many different yeah. Yeah. And because Mu Xin Fancy, the French artist, Sajong, quite a lot, so we have a copy of his sketch. Oh, okay. Oh. So. So he had many, many different influences. True. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I, know, I know part of the museum, I think, is dedicated to some of those different yes. influences. I think we should go upstairs. Okay. Mm -hmm. To watch our step here so we don't fall over. <laughs> uh, so we are going to number two exhibition gallery? Yes. Okay. And the, the museum is built out of three floors. Is that correct? So we're going to the top floor now. <laughs> and then we're going to work our way back down again. Yeah. I actually notice here, because um, earlier we were at the uh, conference centre, and there's a piece of artwork there that I don't know if any of our viewers might have seen it. Oh, it actually, yeah, yeah, here. This was on the wall of the conference centre. Yeah. In this room, we have the abstract landscapes with him. Mm -hmm. And at this stage, I think he has already reached the artistic artistical maturity. And in the morning, we visited the conference center. So we find a picture on the wall. Actually, the original version is here. So, yeah, so maybe you can take a close look. And these are, these are what he's best known for, are they? These kind of works? Or? Well, the worst, probably what's mentioning is that he doesn't have this habit to mark the days when mm -hmm. he created these paintings. Also, he didn't name them, so yeah. we are not particularly sure. Uh -huh. So There's you characterized and... these paintings uh, as just like landscape paintings yeah. in this exhibition gallery. I think it's well up to uh, the audience themselves to uh, decide what they yeah. to, how they to interpret them. I know um, also in the museum you have some of these landscapes but on film so that mm -hmm. you can take yes. a closer look because that's quite a, an interesting way of viewing a piece of art yeah. because it zooms in and you can really mm -hmm. see. Emotion, Clearly. Yeah. Emotion, but he thinks that to paint on a paper is merely his method but the enlarged image of his paintings is truly mm -hmm. his work. Oh, this no, I, I think maybe first we can uh, look at such view here because it is like that building is floating on the water and very beautiful, you can see. As we, as we were saying earlier, you can see the, the um, it's a real interesting st structure, the museum. That's why mm -hmm. we, what we were saying outside. Yeah. It uh, looks like it's floating, but it's actually part of it's underwater, I believe, isn't mm -hmm. it? The, the bottom floor. So. <laughs> so which area are we walking into now? Well, the next room, um, let me make a brief introduction. Actually, Mu Xin was imprisoned in the uh, 1970s, right? And when he was in the pre uh, prison, he kept writing. And so this gallery mainly exhibited his work during that time. But it is very dark here. It's very dark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe moving to maybe we couldn't show you more. Maybe it is a better choice to go this way because I know there is a rest place. Yeah, we have rest in the middle. Mm -hmm. I think one of the mo more interesting parts of, uh, of that area, I was reading the sign, is uh -huh. how, the, how the writing was actually brought out of the prison because uh -huh. he had to sneak it out. I think, I think I'm right in saying by stitching it into his trousers, into his <laughs> pants. So... And then, and then got it out to a friend and, and then was many years later able mm -hmm. to then recover it again. So 
just goes to show how you can uh, perseverance is key with these things. Yes. <clears throat> and after you visited some galleries, and then you have a, you can have a rest here and look out the window, and that is the Grand Theatre in Wuzhen. So there are many performances. Well, in there. I hope you can see it, but it is. I'm not sure it is whether it is clear or not. But looking through the, the window. Yeah. So should we move on? Should we go yeah. this way? We might be changing levels. Oh sure. uh, yeah. It is very quiet here, so we don't talk too much. We just want you to know and to appreciate his work and also the, uh, the great museum. Now here is a special exhibition. Yeah. Because uh, Muxing was a passionate reader of English literature. So thanks to the three-year program of our cultural exchange, mm -hmm. we are able to transport the original manuscripts of the four famous uh, British and uh, English and Irish writers mm -hmm. uh, to China for the first time to meet a Chinese audience. Yes. Namely, Virginia Woolf, Charles Lamb, uh, Lord Byron, and Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde, yes. So, in this first part of the gallery, it's, it's a collection, it's a gallery's collection of different editions of the four writers. So, they are all borrowed from the British the Library. Right. Museum have purchased them. Uh huh. Oh, purchased them. Okay. We even have some rare Chinese editions. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I see. But these books are too fragile to be spoiled. Oh, yeah. so that's why we have printed illustrations in the books. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to be careful with old books, not to <laughs> touch them too much or they fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> and it continues in the next room as well. Mm -hmm. All these four writers, Musin liked them very much. Mm -hmm. so they, these were some of his influences. Yes. He was influenced by the them. We have the lovely girl written by Lord Byron. Uh -huh. The 1923 to 1924 manuscripts of the Hours, which is later published as Mr. Dolloway. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Dolloway, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so this all demonstrates the creative masters of the writers that are used to, to write. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, manuscripts uh, will often have corrections yes. and things like that, one that you mm -hmm. So you can yeah. actually see the way that the writer has changed their mind mm -hmm. and wanted to come up. Yeah, yeah you can, you can, can take a this. close look. And the, yeah, it's Oscar Wilde, this one, isn't it? Yeah. Gives a bit more of an insight into the creative process, like mm -hmm. you were saying. Here we also have the clips from uh, six movies and two mm -hmm. documentaries. So if the audience are interested in the full writer's life, they may have them better. Yeah. Like yeah. To listen and watch. And in those four iPads, we have the Chinese version of the British Library's website. And mm -hmm. we also have the complete copy, the complete uh, digital version of the four manuscripts. Uh, good. <laughs> So if you go here and you will know it is bilingual, bilingual uh, introductions everywhere. So it is quite convenient. So if you want to go here, you can visit here and maybe you can also find our stuff here. <laughs> yeah, I like this place very much. This is a fantastic view. Yeah. We have the whole collection of Mushin's works along with the world classics. And outside, you can see that it's a Japanese-style garden. Mm -hmm. So, Kale Kusan, uh, Kale Kusan Sui, if, if, that, if that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded correct to me. So. <laughs> and all those portraits, the writers, they were mentioned in Mushin's book. Yes. And uh, I was told that there are some Chinese writers and uh, Asian Greek writers mm -hmm. and also the books of Mushin himself. That's true. These books are very precious, so you really have to go here, maybe to read some. Yeah, and we were also told not to walk on here without taking our shoes off, so we, we shall head outside. Yeah. <laughs>
actually, there's a piano there. So uh, if the visitors can play piano, and you, you may allow to play there, right? Unfortunately, we can't. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I took lessons as a kid, but I don't think I'm, no one wants to listen to that. Yeah. Are we going down here? Yes, we are. So now heading down into the bowels of the music. <laughs> A little bit of a maze, really, isn't it? You go around mm -hmm. one side and come back around again. Uh, for those who just joined us, I want you to know that we are uh, in Wuzhen now, uh, a small town, but it's our, all his work. Some artifacts in this room, I think. That mm -hmm. I found this quite interesting. These are old, are they first drafts? Kind of like these unpublished manuscripts. Ah, uh -huh. Doesn't want to really keep it, and it was one day burning this. Some people saw it, that may be burning this manuscript uh, in, in his room. So these were people works that were quite happy to do that. <laughs> so works that he didn't want published, but they still survived, so mm -hmm. they're here to this day. <laughs> what the, uh, we have in this room, basically, we have the unpublished and published manuscripts. Oh. Like There are some books he once read, uh, Chinese books, some Chinese poets, and uh, in ancient times. Because when he, when Wuxing was young, he was, his family was labored to another uh, famous Chinese writer, Mao mm -hmm. Tse. So he was uh, yeah. lucky to use his library. So this this version of books, some classic uh, Chinese books, were similar to the ones he once read. Then we have another view out onto the uh, surrounding landscape that it was, the museum's been built on. Mm -hmm. This side, not so much lake, it's a bit more grass. So. Yeah. Actually, it is winter here, but it is more like autumn. And I know uh, winter might not be the best season to visit here, especially visit Wuzhen, I mean, um, because it is a little bit cold here. But if you want to go here, you can go in spring and autumn. It will be very beautiful and attractive. And this museum in particular, I know, has a cafe that opens up onto a nice little water garden. So I imagine in the, in the spring or the autumn, that must be very nice to yeah. have the doors open there. So. so. So you can look around here, water and the building and trees. Everything is natural. And, yeah. You know, that uh, because between uh, the, the the water and the concrete. Yeah, and you know, Mu Xin is a poet, just as we said, a writer, a painter, artist. So his mind is quite uh, complex. So this, actually, this architecture is a reflection of his complexity yeah. of his whole experience. All the different lines, yeah, because he moved to New York, and then he go went back to Wuzhen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So brought he brought some Western style and into his work, and also combined with the traditional Chinese thoughts. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Here we are. I think we have. What's this we're looking at here? I think this is something that was written in the region. It's a poetry of classical Chinese style. Classical poetry. About how we came about thinking about So this is his calligraphy, right? Uh-huh. So he is also good at calligraphy. <laughs> well, and in, in the previous room, there was even uh, some, I think, unpublished um, music. Oh, oh yeah, as well. yes, so yes. He's also a musician, <laughs> a man of many, finger. many talents. Yeah. And also you can say, uh, if you are tired, you can see here, it is also a place to have a rest. I think there's many places around the museum where you can just sit. Mm -hmm. and take. There's some nice inter, um, kind of audio-visual 
things as well that we can't really show you because it wouldn't come out right. But I think if you could take a moment and sit and watch that, mm -hmm. it'd be quite interesting. Yeah, if you are interested in Muxing and if you want to visit Wuzhen, if you like this museum, you could go personally and to uh, watch some videos and to look at his work, yeah, his painting, take a closer look yeah, at all the his poet. I mean, maybe for now what we could do is just take another step outside and just have a look around the building. Yeah, because for it is really astonishing, it, you know. I think. Thanks very much for showing us around. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So, we head back out again. Anyone who didn't join us earlier and has now stepped in, uh, we're here at the Mushin Art Museum. Yes. We've just gone and had a little look around. Now we're going to step back out again and look at the outside because mm -hmm. it's quite fascinating architecture as well as all the ex yeah. exhibits. And look, yeah, look at the light. I think it's very attractive here. And it's saying it's only two years old, this music, mm -hmm. so it's quite, quite new. But some stuff tells me that it is very busy, actually, and there are many people uh, traveling here and uh, visiting this museum because it is quite famous. And here we are on the outside, and you can see how it's been built onto, onto the top of a, a lake. And I can't remember the name of the mm. lake. Perhaps you might. <laughs> That's testing, though, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't remember, too. <laughs> but it's, it's been made to look like it's floating on top of the lake, the whole mm -hmm. museum. Even though, as you saw when we were walking around inside, it's, it's actually built into the lake. So there's some yeah. levels that are below the level of the water. Um, and, and the, even though it looks like wood, it's actually all made out of concrete as well, which is uh, quite an interesting style. Yeah. And our guide was saying that um, despite the fact that Mushin never actually saw the museum when mm -hmm. it was finished, mm -hmm. he, did, he did get to see some of the sketches. Sketches, yeah. yes. And when he first saw the sketches, he said, water, winged, and a bridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was the, the concepts behind why the, why the museum was built the way it was. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, there's some boat there, yeah, you right. can see. Traditional Chinese boat. Apparently <laughs> it's quite boat. a popular boat in lake. Yeah. Uh, so I imagine more so in the summer, probably. It's a little cool, I think, to be going out <laughs> on the water at the moment. But. And we have, a, uh, this is the theatre you were mentioning earlier. Oh, is it a yes. Yeah. It is Wuzhen Grand Theatre. A little and bit of a better view. We have yeah. here now, we're outside. Yeah. Maybe we could look over this side as well. Okay, good. Because this is looking back towards the main village of Wujin, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the town, sorry. You know, Wujin has 1,300 years history. but Its name has never been changed. You know, some cities or small towns in China, their names could probably be changed through time, over, time. over times, yes. But Wuzhen has never been changed. Mm -hmm. And also the lifestyle, the buildings, and their, uh, uh, their way to live a life and to maybe to find their jobs, everything didn't change. Well, this is quite fitting that the museum is built here on the water because the whole town really is built on water yeah. isn't it it's mm -hmm. intersected by canals Canal. and by waterways yes and that's how people used to make their living and in some cases still do because people people still live here and work here so. yeah and, and here we have the gift shop in case you wanted to buy anything uh, i think it is a gift shop you think it's the gift shop? yeah <laughs> we haven't been in that part yet but they probably don't want us to film inside so we won't do that so. Oh, yeah, that was uh, Mushin Art Museum. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do get a chance to visit, we'd highly recommend it, I think, because yeah. it's getting a chance to actually take a proper look at some of the exhibits, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and read read about them as well, because there's some fascinating information yes. in there. And as you were saying, it's bilingual, there's Chinese yeah. and English. And so it is, it is not difficult to understand his work and his paintings. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to visit China and if you want to uh, visit Wuzhen, now Muxin Art Museum uh, is a place you have to go. And today we are showing show you around the Muxin Art Museum about the architecture, about Muxin himself. 
And I want you.、Uh, I I hope you like our live stream today. And、uh, I am Xiaoming. Greg Fenton. Thank you so, very much for joining so, us. So yeah, thank you. Bye. If you like us, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, on China Daily's Twitter, Facebook, and and you will find something more interesting about China, about the world. Right.、And、See you. More live streams from Wu Jin.、Mm-hmm.